<clears throat> all right, Shalom. As always, before I begin, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakudash. All right, what you just heard me say in the beginning is the true name of the Heavenly Father and the true name of His beloved Son in the Paleo Hebrew, okay? And according to prophecy, pursuing to Zephaniah, the third chapter, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the eighth or the ninth verse. It speaks about the Heavenly Father returning unto His people a pure language, okay? That they may all call upon His name to serve Him in one consent, all right? And that pure language is the Paleo-Hebrew, okay? Which has been brought back unto the nation of Israel in this generation. The name Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls God or Jehovah, which the name Yahweh means He is or He to be. Baha Shem, Ba means in, Ha means the, and Shem means name, in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, okay, who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ or Yeshua, which the name Yahweh Shai means he delivers or the deliverer, okay? Double honor to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word in that rule well, and peace and blessings go out to the elect that have been scattered abroad the four winds of the earth and are in the hopes of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, showing mercy upon us in the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? And um, I'm not too sure what I'm going to call this lesson, but it might just be called early morning thoughts regarding false prophets, okay? And pretty much um, as I was examining my day yesterday at night, it hit me that a lot of these people are being deceived by a lot of false prophets, man. Mainly, um, the main prophets that I'm going to speak about are your, you know, your priests down in the Catholic and the Christian church, these Muslims, these monks, all those people. They're nothing but false prophets, man, because here it is right now. Every social media platform, every news channel, all these different podcasts with these, you know, people that are in the know, like Alex Jones, Joe Rogan, all these people are speaking about the CBDC, the new infrastructure of a digital banking system. And guess what? They're all, you know, to summarize what they're saying they're all linking it with the scriptures and some headlines of different uh, news articles speak about this being a biblical um a biblical time okay but here it is you have these different churches and whatnot as well as these different israelite groups not telling you nothing man just like it says in revelation the 19th chapter in the 10th verse okay we have to be in the spirit of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, which is the spirit of prophecy, okay? And just like it says in 2nd Ezra, as a matter of fact, lucky. let me grab these scriptures instead of just quoting them. So first, let's get Revelation 19 and 10. It says, And I fell at his feet, at, <clears throat> excuse me, and I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Okay, and this is the angel speaking to John the Revelator. Okay, when he was on the island of Patmos. It says, I am thy fellow servant and of, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Heavenly Father, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, and knowing that, we should all be looking for the signs that our Lord and Savior gave us throughout the scriptures, okay? When you read Matthew, the 24th chapter, Luke, the 21st chapter, Mark, the 13th chapter, and many other scriptures, it tells you of, it gives you a variety of signs to look out for, okay? And this is something that these different Israelite groups and these churches that your family goes to, your friends go to, they're not giving you no they're not measuring the time diligently in itself okay 
All they're doing is soothing your ears from that itch that you have, okay? So, man, it's a... When you truly, you know, marvel at this and understand how through the Heavenly Father has these people and that strong delusion spoken of in Second uh, Thessalonians, the second chapter. Man, we're blessed, Akio. We're truly blessed, okay? Yeah, we may have days where, you know, we're in a little pit. We're, we're in a trance of mourning. But guess what, man? You have the truth, okay? So that should really, you know, should knock that out. But yeah, like I said, you know, we all have moments where, you know, we may tear up here and there. You know, speaking as a man. But, you know, you got to gird up yourself as a man. Gird up thy loins and continue to push through the straight gate, okay? Because right now we're coming into a sim- we're coming into a time where the Heavenly Father is going to continue to turn up the heat on our afflictions, okay? And right now is not the time to be lukewarm or half-stepping in this truth, man. All right? Next scripture I wanted to grab was 2nd Ezra 9, starting at the top. It says, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And how are you supposed to measure the time? Through the scriptures, okay? The scriptures ultimately is like a ru- uh, a ruler, okay? You know, like a ruler that you measure things with. This is what the Heavenly Father has blessed us with. To measure what time he's going to come back. To measure, okay, we got, you know, the MLTB still isn't in place, so... You know, let's continue to push forward the doctrine, okay? This is what your pastors aren't doing. They're not, not only are they not building up your faith, but they're not edifying you, and they're not pushing the fear of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, okay? Because that's main, that's the main objective of a prophet, okay? Just like it says in Isaiah 58 and 1, to cry aloud and spare not, to lift up your voice like a trumpet, and to show our people their transgressions. They're not telling our people about all the wickedness that they're caught up in. Okay? Matter of fact, instead of calling them out on their BS, they're, you know, they're promoting it. Okay? They're promoting wickedness, man. And very soon the Heavenly Father is going to start re- recompensing everyone according to their actions. Like it says in Galatians 6 and 7. The Heavenly Father is not macked. I'm sorry, I said Mac. The Heavenly Father is not mocked. For that which a man soweth, that shall he reap. Okay? And very soon, everyone's going to start reaping the fruit, uh, excuse me, the fruit that they sowed in the ground. Okay? Reading on, it says, And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made, okay? And this shows that the Apocrypha, you know, just a little side note, is valid, okay? Because Yahweh Shai, he, uh, he paraphrased 2nd Ezra the ninth chapter, okay? When you go into these different prophetic scriptures in the New Testament, Yahweh Shai always made mention to watch, okay? The main scripture that emphasizes on the point of watching is Mark the 13th chapter, okay? That's the job and the duty of a prophet, you know? Our names, uh, the name of a prophet back then was a seer, okay? And what does a, pro- uh, a prophet see? The prophecies, okay? And you can, you know, the word seer and watch are synonymous with each other, okay? We're watchers on our watchtower, you know? Um, okay, so that's all I wanted right there. Next uh, scripture I had in line was Jeremiah the seven chapter, starting at the top. It says, Jeremiah chapter seven verse one. It reads, "The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of Yahweh, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the power of Israel." 
amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Okay, that's what we're supposed to be doing, and that's the process of what happens with the elect when they wake up. Okay, they amend their ways with the Heavenly Father and cut off all that wickedness that they were once a part of in the world. Okay, which is something that these pastors are not telling you to do. Okay, these priests are doing nothing but feeding you lies and nonsense and digging your grave deeper and deeper and ultimately allowing you to be consumed with the deceivableness of Yahweh, I'm sorry, not Yahweh Shai, of Esau, okay? Because Esau has used the scriptures as a weapon against us, okay? And this isn't the first time he's done it, all right? When Esau came over here on his slave ships, the main point I want to emphasize is the northern kingdom. He was using the scriptures as a weapon, man. And to this day, Esau is doing the exact same thing. Just like it says in Ecclesiastes 3 and 15, that which has been is now. All right. And the same thing is being repeated over and over again, even to this day. All right. But something different that's happened in this generation is that the Lord sent the spirit of Abba. I'm sorry. The Lord sent the spirit of Elijah back on the scene through the man Abba Bivens, okay? To the point where we have the proper understanding of the word of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai now, okay? <clears throat> verse 3, I'm sorry, I already read that. Verse 4, it says, Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord are these, okay? And that can go into, you know, your local Catholic church, Christian church, Jehovah Witness church, all that nonsense, man. The Heavenly Father isn't dealing with temples made by hands, all right? If you read the scriptures, you can clearly understand that the Heavenly Father wants us out in the highways and hedges, proclaiming His words and bidding people to the marriage, Okay? That's what we're supposed to do, according to the scriptures. Not being in, you know, in churches and temples. None of that, man. All right. Verse five. For if you, th if, excuse me, for if you truly amend your ways and your doings, if you truly e execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless and the widow, and shed not blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, and in a nutshell, this is all that these different churches are doing, man. Instead of telling their people the truth, they're killing them. Okay? All these foolish shepherds, they're doing nothing but leading them right into the same pit that they're going to fall into, man. And like it said, um, walk after other gods to your hurt. And that's what these, you know... Mainly these, um, yeah, mainly Christianity and Catholicism, that's what they push, okay? The worship of Guadalupe and other nonsense like that, man. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Verse 7, it says, Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave you, I'm sorry, in the land that I gave you, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever, okay? And the only ones who are going to fulfill this is the elect, okay? The elect and the ones that have the spirit of Yahweh Shai upon them, all right? That are feeding the sheep with pastures according to the heart of the Heavenly Father. Verse 8, Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. And that's the majority of our people, man. Just like it says in the book of, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say that's in Isaiah. Isaiah 30, where it speaks about um, our people rather want to hear. Matter of fact, let me just read it. It's lucky. Yep, this is Isaiah chapter 30, starting at the 8th verse. It says, Now... Go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. All right? And that time is right now, man. 
Okay? Where all the scriptures, like it says in the book of Ezekiel, all the prophecies and the visions that the prophets had are going to be fulfilled very soon. Okay? Verse 9, it says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of Yahweh. Okay? Which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. And like it was, you know, like I continue to say, these different churches, they fulfill this scripture to the T, man, because that's exactly what they're feeding our people with. Nothing but with lying words that profit them nothing. Verse 11, it says, get you out the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to be to cease from before us. It says, Wherefore thus said the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise the word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. And that's Jake like a mug, man. And the point that I want to make is that our people, you know, like pursuing to Genesis, um, if I'm not mistaken, the 27th chapter, where it speaks about Jacob, okay? One of our forefathers, it said that Jacob was a, a plain man living in tents, okay? We're very peaceful, you know, we're very peaceful, okay? And Jake is going to do everything in his ability to continue to be in that spirit of, you know, being at ease, okay? But just like the scriptures say, there's a season for everything, a time of peace and a time of war, so on and so forth, okay? Right now, we are not in the time of peace. We're in the time of war, man. Of where the trying of your faith is going to be at the max, okay? Verse 13, it says, Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking comes suddenly at an instant. Okay? Matter of fact, let me... um, Because this is all beautiful, man. Because it goes into exactly, you know, the title of this lesson. I'm going to start at the 11th verse, reading it in the NLT, just to, you know, further bring justice of the point of this lesson. It says, forget all this gloom. Get off your narrow path. Stop telling us about your Holy One of Israel. And that's the spirit that our people are in okay just like it tells us in the book of john light has come into the world but our people love darkness okay they rather be in that you know in the shadow in that alleyway where there's nothing but filth okay verse 12 this is the this is the reply of the holy one of israel because you despise what i tell you and trust instead in oppression and in lies calamity will come upon you suddenly like a bulging wall that bursts and falls. In an instant, it will collapse and come crashing down. Okay? That's what's about to ready. That's Salakia. That's what's getting ready to happen. Okay? Very soon, when the MOT to the B is mandated throughout the four winds of the earth, that's what's going to, you know, that's the last straw that's going to break this camel's back, okay? That's what's going to finally make this wall burst and fall. And just like it speaks about in Luke, the sixth chapter, the only house that's going to be stable are those that built their house upon stone. But the rest of the, the rest of the other people that have built their houses that weren't on that stone, it said the ruin of that house is going to be you know, roughly paraphrasing, it's going to be magnifying, man. Okay? So for us, brothers and sisters, that uh, are not caught up in all that deceivableness that Esau has put upon our people, you got to thank the Lord every day, man. Because we were all caught up in that same pickle, man. Worshipping, you know, Jesus. Worshipping a white man. Not having any understanding of what, not having no understanding at all, man. Completely in that dead estate. Okay. The water Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai for waking us up to this truth 
and for finally you know giving us back the giving us back the breath of life okay and that's basically all I had in store for this lesson I can lords will um not like there was another scripture I wanted to bring up but it escapes my mind okay so lucky you can Zechariah 11 around might be 10 Where it speaks about the foolish shepherd. Yep. Um, Zechariah 11, starting at the 15th verse, it says, And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instrument of a foolish shepherd. All right. So the Heavenly Father gave Zechariah a commandment as, you know, to be as a foolish shepherd for a reason. Okay. And let's get into it. Verse 16. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not visit those that be cut off. Neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces. And that's exactly what these false prophets are doing, man. You know, instead of, you know, putting ointment on the wounds of our people. Giving them the good tidings of the word. They're doing nothing but like it said, you know. It said, but he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces. And of course, you know, this is parabolic speaking. All right. When you go into it, speaking about taking their money and putting them in the worst trance, man. Verse 17, it says, woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. And this is what's about to happen, man. When these prophecies are being made manifest on broad daylight, the people are going to be in a spirit of perplexity and they're going to be running to their churches with so many questions that they don't have the answers to, that these priests are going to be, you know, 50 miles away from that church, man. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Okay. And that's what's ready to happen to a lot of these false prophets that are doing nothing but leading our people to the slaughter. Okay. And that are scattering them. So once again, man, the water, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, for giving us the blessing to understand the true breakdown of his words, man. All right, so with that, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash, double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this truth and that rule well. And peace and blessings go out to the elect that are scattered about the four winds of the earth and that are in the hopes of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, delivering us in the times to come. Okay, so with that,